Welcome, everybody, to Official XPod Show and Tell, episode 105, 1.5 for the Structural Battery Pack. Uh, we have today with us Joshua, who uh, is an automotive engineer from the UK. And yeah, so maybe Joshua, how are you doing, first of all? Good. Yeah, good. Thanks. How are you doing? Yeah, and uh, maybe you can tell people like uh, like how, how this came about. Why did we schedule this? Why are we here? Uh, maybe a little bit of background of how this happened. Yeah, so I saw your um, you know proposed designs that you've been putting on Twitter, uh, had a few questions, and yeah, that's kind of how it started. Yeah, so so yeah, I get I get tons of questions both in DMs and on Twitter, and sometimes it's really difficult to uh, get into it. Uh, I was telling Joshua that it's the, basically what started it is I posted, uh, and you can see it on Miro right now. It's uh, like my um, like a speculative design of what the structural pack would be, and um, it's. They were asking, well, a lot of people were asking, why are the cooling tubes, why am I running them like longitudinally, like from the uh, front of the car to the rear instead of uh, laterally width wise. And I, I basically said, there's like a solution space as I was iterating and trying to figure it out that made this a much more like desirable configuration. And I'll do, I'll do a disclaimer before we start also that like this is a work in progress speculative design. So there's no, uh, this this might change and uh from my point of view and tesla's design will probably be radically different anyway so this is basically just having fun trying to figure it out how best this revolutionary like pack would would come together so this is like the 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 the, the first part of it so maybe uh, if there's any questions or comments maybe we can dive right in all right. Yeah, so, so yeah, let's do it. So basically, like, I'm, I'm just going to review here. I have, uh, I have my pointer. I'll take, let's say, a pen. Let's just test it out. Yeah, it works. So, uh, yeah. So this is the the structural pack at where I am right now. So it's basically uh, 24 wide by 35, 36 long, and these are the cooling tubes right here, uh, and they're the the type. Same as like the plaid, which has both the inlet and the outlet on the same side. So this this is basically mm -hmm. where we started. And I'm going to just move along. Uh, so if I take this and I uncover what's following, just going to move it along. So, yeah, so we had we had clues and these are basically the the clues that we had uh, that we've seen. So there was electric that had a, like a foamed out pack. And you'll see that, um, uh, well, the cooling lines right here, like widthwise to the pack, like contrary to what I'm running. And you can see the, these are the triangles of all the little cooling tubes right here. And they're snaking between the cells. And you can see also little pipes like the returns on, on the flip side over there. And then we had uh, Sandy Monroe, who had also here with the, the green cells, had a pack. And here too, you can see the cooling lines, they run widthwise. So th that was two clues. And most recently we had the Giga Berlin where it has this uh, demo pack. And also you can see all the cooling lines are, are lined up right here, running widthwise to the car. And they both also have like only one, one inlet on one side. So that means the outlet has to be on the flip side, a little bit like we see on the electric uh, leaked photo. And uh, just just to say that these photos, uh, except for the Giga Berlin one, like the electric and the Sandy Monroe, they, I think they're about 18 months old. And of course, 4680s are still not in production. The structural pack is still not in production. So these are like old photos. And for Giga Berlin, you'll see also that it's not an actual pack. It's like a demo stations, like the batteries are not connected. The, the cooling tubes are not connected. And if you look here, you'll see that they, they did like a cross section to show you that it's filled with foam and you'll see it's off center. So, you know, and these are not real cells cut in half. It's just like to demonstrate you what they're thinking about, what, what the future looks like. And um, can and I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. So you have yours going the lengthwise, but these are going widthwise. 
exactly. So we'll talk about lengthwise, widthwise, longitudinally, transversely, you know, like transversely, like longitudinally is in the direction the car drives, basically. So they're going from the rear wheels to the front wheels. That's longitudinally. And transversely is basically driver side to, let's say, passenger side. Does that make sense? Yeah, go just, ahead. Just for back, just just for background for people, you know, Tesla have done it both ways. <laughs> They're not married to doing it one way. On Model Three, Model Y, they go front to back, and the Plaid, they go, you know, in and out down the side. So, you know, they both, exactly, they're both exactly. valid, very good point. solutions. That, that, oh that yeah, totally. Image, that image there, I don't think that is actually off center, is it? That that section. Because... Uh, yeah, it, it is off center because, yeah, it's uh, intercalated rows. So this would be like half of the row, but the cells go further. But you're not seeing it. It would be in the next row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and anyway, we'll cover yeah, exactly. this. I think I have another picture uh, showing this, explaining this uh, a little bit more in detail. So I'll just, I'll, I'll just move along. And I want to show like three examples where, you know, Tesla shows us stuff and it turns out that it's not exactly – uh, like that. So if you take the 4680 cells, uh, the top part, you'll see like the, the, what I call the nipple, which is the cathode. You'll see that in the battery video uh, under the nipple, there's an insulating material that looks like to be like a white disc of like a polymer of some sort. And at Giga Berlin, you had the same 4680 with the, the nipple here, but you'll see, especially if you zoom in, and I'll zoom in for, for people like viewing, there's like a very tiny little black that looks like polymer, uh, like very similar in diameter to the, to the cathode nipple. But there's also like some dark gray matter right underneath it. This appears to be a glue or something, and it's very different than what was in all the videos from the 4680, which is a disc which is much larger in diameter than the nipple, and no glue, no nothing, just white. Um, then there's, if we look at the bottom of the cell, uh, we had also like from the videos, um, you see here the bottom of the cell. Uh, being like, I think, inspected by cameras. And here you have uh, other cells and you see there's a copper rivet and there's much more like detail uh, in the cell. So uh, depending on the information that you're being shown, you're not being shown always like the same thing. And there might be very, various reasons for that. Tesla is known to iterate quite rapidly and always revising their designs uh, there's also the possibility that's, you know, they want to hide stuff. They don't want to show exactly uh, how they're going to be doing things so much in advance. Uh, last example I have is inside like the jelly roll. So you have here the photo from Giga Berlin where they show the open cells and they're showing the flags uh, of the, uh, the electrode, uh, the anode. And from the leaked photo from Electric, we saw that, you know, there's like a copper structure that is not present in the photo of Giga Berlin. Now, the copper structure is not like the technology. So here I'm guessing they just like the tablet technology is actually seeing all these little flags folded down. So it might be just that you're seeing this and it's because they want to showcase the flags and not necessarily the, the little current collector that they attach to the flags. So you, you got to take everything that you see with a certain grain of salt uh, that it might not be like either the final design or what actually tesla wants to show you or what tesla wants to showcase uh, does that make sense so far yeah, but uh, i do think based on you know the evidence that the concept is uh, as they've shown or as has been leaked multiple times and just comparing you know your your iterative you know your current iteration of your design the the you know, the, the main advantage of this whole pack is to be a structural part of the car uh, as we all know um mm -hmm. in, in your design it's kind of split into four you know fish fingers four modules and i think do you have the yes the, the circuit boards for, for the bms in between yes yeah well that, that that's the thing that's the thing like in, in the other photos you see a cooling system or an incomplete cooling system but you don't see any bms also yes yeah, so, so, so it, it, it's not shown but but it, it, if we think about the bms boards from 
the Model 3 and Model Y, which, which have a lot more mm-hmm. cells. They're, mm-hmm. they're only four little tiny boards. So I've got an image of this. Maybe I can paste in. Yeah. Um, one second. Can we just paste that anywhere? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So it can make so, it maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah. So, so the red arrow there is, is pointing to the, the BMS board mm-hmm. that's on the Model 3 module. And, you know, it, it's not very big. Uh, and the, the, if you look at the, the plaid ones, they're a bit bigger because there's more cells to measure and control. But the, the, this 4680 pack is going to have a lot less cells. So I would think that they could get away with a single BMS board at the rear of the pack. We know it's it's more likely to be at the rear of the pack because that's where it is on Model 3, Model Y. It needs to be in close proximity to the main mm-hmm. BMS control module, which lives in the penthouse, which is still there, as we've seen from other gigabit yeah. image, Im- images. So I don't think you need as many boards as you've got in your design. And I also think it, it needs to be a single continuous grid of cells that is you know, f- fully covered by the, the foam to, to get that, uh, you know, single plate, that shear plate to give strength to the vehicle. So I don't yeah, think the, it'll, be, it'll be split. Like okay. That. So like, yeah, we're, we're going to, we're, we're, we're going to move along with that. Yes. Yeah, so here, I think we're dealing with the, the, the model, uh, depending on which uh, module it is in the model Y or three with the 2170s, I think it's like 23 yeah. bricks. So they're basically balancing 23 yeah. bricks. It's, each brick has, uh, I don't remember, like 60-odd uh, cells uh, per brick and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Here, um, the equivalent of the bricks, at least in my design, is basically six cells. So we're, we're the, 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 the dimensions yeah. are very different, but also like the plaid went with boards along the entire length of the car instead of having five small boards. And, and we, there's also another leaked photo from Giga Berlin, but let, before we get into like the whole pack, uh, let's, uh, I'll just get, I'm going to move along with a little bit of the presentation because we're going to be addressing these things more in detail. So here, I just wanted to reiterate uh, like for the packing. Okay. So there's like two basic packing uh, arrangements for hexagonal packing. Uh, so I'll annotate here. So basically here, uh, I, I don't know if you see, like I left the, the, the orientation. So you have X, Y, and Z is like vertical. So if uh, I'll, I'll redraw it here. So you have X going here and you have Y going this way. So if, if we're taking this packing orientation, I call this uh, the one zero. Okay, so this is one zero orientation because if you pick any cell, like for example, this cell right here, the neighbor, which is perfectly in line with it, is one or minus one in the X direction. So you can see here, I'm, I already have an immediate neighbor that's basically touching it and in the same, uh, in the same line. Whereas if I go in the Y direction, I end up in between two cells. And here it's basically the opposite. If I pick any cell and I go into the X direction, I end up in between two cells. And if I go into the Y direction, I end up, or my minus one direction in the Y direction, I end up with a cell. So I call this the zero one direction. So this is basically nomenclature. And you can already tell that, of course, if you rotate this 90 degrees, you get the same thing, but you can't rotate the pack in a car. A car has a rectangular pack and you have like the rear wheels and you have the front wheels and this pack has an orientation and the car drives, let's say in this direction. So if you pack him this way or you pack him this way, it's not exactly the same thing. So I'll, uh, if this is clear, like the orientation and how I call it one zero and zero one, uh, this is, is, is just for, for reference, I'm just going to be moving along uh, in the presentation. So here I just stack them. Uh, and I want to show a few things. So basically, if we're looking, what type of stacking is this right here? Well, you pick any cell, for example, this one, and you can see that its neighbor, it's on the x-axis, again, x, y, x, and y. 
And so this is a, a one zero orientation. Now I wanted to mention like cooling tubes. Okay. If, so I'm going to change color for cooling tube. I'm going to take a blue marker. Okay. So if we run cooling tubes, uh, you'll see that in the, like this in between cells, I'm trying to follow, I'm doing this with a mouse. Sorry about that. It's, it's not very clear, but you can see that each cooling tube basically cools a pair of cells, right? And the cooling tube right now is running also in the one zero direction. But the thing is, you can't run a cooling tube in the zero one direction if you're, you're stacked them in the one zero. So th this is like a, basically a rule, because if you try here to run a cooling tube, you'll see that I can run a cooling tube. I can snake one in. You see it like this, but here I'm cooling this cell super good, cooling this cell super good. I'm cooling this cell super good. This one, this one, and this one, but this one is barely touching the cooling tube. It's just a tangent point. And so is uh, this one. This one's not getting any cooling. This one's not getting any cooling. This one's not getting any cooling. And this one's not getting any cooling. So basically, you would have to run twice the number of cooling tubes. So I, if I want to cool this one, well, I'd have to run one here, right? And now, same thing. Every second cell will get cooled. This will cool here. This will cool here. This will cool uh, here. This one will cool this one, and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? Is, uh, I know it's not super clear, the, the drawing, but you guys no, get totally what I mean? Good. You, to you mm -hmm. totally get it. Okay, so this you would have between each row of cells, you would have to run yep. one cooling tube. Whereas, and this is not the way, and these cooling tubes have very large, like, S shapes, whereas the standard ones, both ever since the original Model S and all the way to the Plaid and 2170 Model Y, the, the cooling tubes run in the same direction of the packing of the cells. So it's this direction. Since the original roads. Yeah, exactly. It, it's it, so if you choose a packing directions, your cooling tube has to follow that. That's like like a rule. So and I and that's why I, I, th I think we've got another clue there, haven't we? Because the image below from Tesla, all of the promotional materi yeah. material material exactly shows it in that orientation, which would suggest side to side. Cool. Yeah. So here, right here, it's uh, one zero. Because again, like I'll try to draw it like like this. This would be the X in front of the car uh, here would be the Y and you'll see all the cells here are touching each other. So they're rows like this. So they're basically in the X direction. So it's one zero same here. Uh, for, these are two like from battery day. So also here, when you look at the front of the cutaway of the structural pack, uh, when they were comparing it to the uh, model three, you'll see that also all the cells are touching each other which, and it looks like the Giga Berlin, and this is also one zero orientation. So if this is one zero orientation, then even if they're not depicted in this image, the cooling tubes have to run from like here to here, this way. And same in this photo, the cooling tubes, since it's a rule, you have to run them this way. So transversely, widthwise, however you want to call them, the cooling tubes have to run this way. Okay, so so now that we've 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 established this rule, now let's talk about uh, maybe what's next. Okay, so now packing. Like, what does it give when you pack them? So here in the next image that I'm zooming in on right now, you'll see I've I've packed. This is a group. Uh, let me take back the red pen. So both of these groups are identical in their number of cells. This is twenty four wide by 36. The only difference is that this one is in the zero one packing orientation. And this one is in the one zero. They have the same spacing and the same number of cells. So right away, like when you do this, and I, I want to go back like to battery day, two things Elon mentioned was first, there was like the safety issue. Like the fact that you can move the cells closer to the center of the car means that if there's an inside impact, 
the, the impact must be that much stronger to basically reach the cells and affect the pack. So from a safety perspective, if you're looking to pack 24 by 36 cells, you're best to pack them in this direction. So for safety, no other consideration. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm talking about a solution space. Not one item is enough to make you decide to go on one path of the design versus another. But uh, like safety, this is the safest design than this because this you're closer to the sides. And the second thing he mentioned about packing the cells was the moment of inertia, which is basically the closer the mass is to the center of gravity of the car, to the center line of the car, the more nimble the car is. Again, these two packs, these two number of cells are identical, so they weigh the same. But if you run like a center line in the pack, you'll see that the distance between the center line to the cell is not the same as if you run a center line in this pack, the distance, the weight of, of let's say this one cell is closer to the center line. So this is basically the ice skater with her arms in, and this is the ice skater with her arms out. So uh, both for safety and for um, a moment of inertia, the zero one configuration takes it. Do, do we agree on this point? It's true apples to apples, but if you look at the, the image here, battery demand. Like where uh, where are you? Oh, there you are. Yeah, I'm, I caught up with you. So, if I draw a line down there. Yeah, it's not very visible. You're in black, I think. <laughs> Sorry, let me do that again. So if we draw a line down here, you can see that it's it, it's still more inboard, even using the one zero. You know, just for the chosen number of cells. It's further inboard yeah. than the previous 2170 pack anyway. So it's an improvement. Yeah, but yeah, but let, let me, because I, I, this image is not quite accurate and I've no, shown a little bit later, uh, I've corrected it and I'll, I'll show the difference. So let me, uh, Amy, you wanted to say something? Oh, oh sorry, I thought you did. Uh, so... Last thing I want to talk about here uh, and on the mechanical side. Now, since we know that uh, the, the cooling tubes are basically attached to two rows of cells, so they run. So I, I've split them here in color where you can clearly see that uh, we, we can call these like cooling tube assemblies because it's one cooling tube that's epoxy to two rows of cells. So if we're looking at the, again, this is the zero one, and this is the one zero. You basically have beams. And I, I, I put this photo of somebody like dismantling a Model 3 pack, and you can see the module that he's lifting. Uh, he's basically lifting almost like from the end points. You see his strap is on the end point. And I just want you to look at the deflection of this pack. It's almost non-existent. So from the, 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 the own weight of the pack, once all this is like glued together, it's basically like a beam. Uh, and it's not moving. And I also wanted to show like the longitudinal railings that they've added for, for stiffening because these modules are not structural. They're basically bolted down on one side and they're hanging uh, off the truss on the, other, on, on the other side. So once you look at these elements that are yellow, red, yellow, and in and, and both configuration, these are like beams. Right, So they're glued, they're very stiff, they can support their own weight with very little deflections. And this is where I want to talk about like the stiffness uh, uh, of the car. So if you put, like if I'm going to draw, and this is going to be very crude, like the front and rear. Yeah, it's hard to interrupt. No, until uh, the end of questions, because, because I have to stop the video. And if questions run long, then I have okay. to quit the presentation uh, to like record and so on and so forth. So we're going to keep the questions for the end. And the, the Miro is still yeah. going to be available and I will okay. be recording it. But I just want to have the segment of the presentation in like chunks that I can manage. So if I do mm -hmm. the two wheels and I, 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 would, I would put a board here like and weight coming down because you are connecting the rear wheels to the front wheels, the best configuration would be longitudinal 
like boards. Uh, right, uh, Joshua? But that doesn't affect the stiffness, does it? Because the stiffness is, you know, it's in all directions. Once it's, um, you know, glued together, it... it no, no, but before the... it's glued together, let's say before it's glued to, before we go into like the composite sandwich structure, like if we're just, let's say, connecting mm-hmm. the, the rear of the car to the front of the car and we need to put beams in, like if you would build a yeah. car, you would put beams in the zero one direction, not in the one zero. Yeah, because you need to get from the front to the back. From the front to the back. And the uh, stiffness wise, if you're thinking about, let's say, corrugated cardboard, if you cut a piece of corrugated cardboard, and if I look at it like on this, like front wise here, so you would have like the corrugations like this, and you have the front sheet and the bottom sheet, this structure would be in, in, in torsion would be stiffer than this one, which if you look from this side, you would see the corrugations. Right now we're talking about like the sandwich structure, like from a torsion perspective, this one would be stiffer than this one in, 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 in this axis. Mm, I don't see that. I think it would be the same because they're just glued together, aren't they? It effectively makes a slab, which is as long as the glue is or the foam is applied uh, evenly. Yes, but before the foam, there, we still talked about the cooling tube assemblies, which are highly rigid in and of themselves. They're basically like a beam. And these beams yeah. are like, mm-hmm. um, you only have a cooling tube. So let, let, let me zoom in here. It's going to be hard maybe to see, but you have a cooling tube running here. And you have a cooling tube running here. And these things, let me drop the thickness of it. These things are like stitched together with high strength epoxy. But there's no cooling tube here. So if I take in, I don't know, another color like green, there's no cooling tube here. This one is not stitched to that one. This one is not true. So basically, this in this configuration, you have 12 beams which are so six yellow, six red, who are running lengthwise of the car. And here you have, um, uh, what is it, 36? Uh, so that's um, 18. So nine red, nine yellow beams running widthwise. And uh, th- there was a comment also that, that caught, uh, I didn't catch it right away when listening to it, but when I went back to like thinking about which way it was, Elon said, those, cast- those I mean, I'm quoting, those castings are quite important because you want to transfer load into the structural battery pack in a very smooth, continuous way. So you don't put arbitrary point loads into the battery. So you want to sort of feather the load out from the front to the rear of the structural battery. Now, if if here I'm connecting to the front of the car, I'm basically connecting on one or two beams that are running widthwise, and same thing for the rear, whereas that here on the front, if this is the front of the car, I'm distributing the load on 12 beams, and same thing for the rear. Does that make sense, Joshua? It does, but for me, the, the strength of this pack will, will be from the, the, the grid array of, of cells glued together and then sandwiched between the top and bottom layer, mm-hmm. which are steel pressings of the pack. Yep. And I, I don't think that the cooling channels will be doing a lot of structural work because they're not connected. The cooling channels don't, don't have a hard connection at the end of the pack to the rest of the car. But don't they no, but add, to, go ahead. add to the structure? Since they're rigid and yeah, that, 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 that's where I'm saying with the, the Model Three. The Model Three has no structural foam, has no no structural components, but just these seven cooling uh, these uh, yeah seven cooling tubes that are glued together uh, are extremely rigid, all by themselves. Yes, but the, yeah, and, and they give you know integrity as shown in our image. But at the end, there is no mechanical con- connection of the cooling uh, the cooling channel to the rest of the car. So it's just in... No, 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 exactly. Yeah. No, I, I, the, the cooling is not, but I'm, I'm saying if, if we forget about the whole cooling, let's say batteries did not need any cooling, uh, this would be a much more rigid 
and easy to feather the, 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 from front to rear you could, because you're attaching the front of the car to basically 12 beams that are connected to 12 beams that connect to the rear of the car. Whereas here, you have 18 beams, but when you're connecting the front of the car, you're connecting basically to the one lateral beam and one lateral beam to the back, and there's no basically connection between any of these. I, I understand that the sandwich structure like binds these together, but before they're bound by the glue and the top and bottom face sheets, we still have a structure inside. And one tends, like I said, this is a solution spade. This is not, well, this is the reason why I'm going longitudinally instead of uh, uh, transversely. But this is where my mind goes when I'm thinking about, you know, we talked about the safety. We talked about the moment of inertia. We're talking about now the stiffness and the feathering of the load from like front to rear, uh, you know, and uh, all these things. So far, like all the check marks have been on the zero one direction. So I'm just going to keep on going and maybe then after that, we can have a, a like a discussion about all these points. Now, okay, here, here there's a lot of to take in here. Okay, so I, I did investigate like the width wise cooling. Okay, and uh, basically what I call an array is those uh, in my design, I have like four arrays uh, that are each six rows of, of, of cell. And widthwise, this is where, you know, you investigate and, you know, I tried like four arrays. These are like pseudo modules because they're not really modules. They're not like separate uh, in a structural pack. So I call them arrays. So I tried like four arrays, five arrays, six arrays, because one of the thing is like each cooling tube needs cells on both sides. So when you're doing the, um, the arrays, you need to end up with an even number of cells, like mechanically, if you want to, what is connected electrically to be connected mechanically, also, you need to have an even number. So, so here I have, let's say four arrays, and let's say I'm connecting them each row per array, like parallel groups. I'm doing 10P. So I would have four times. This is where I put the color so people can follow along. So I put four times 10 equals 40. 40 times 24 rows equals 960. This is too large. The pack, and this is the pack that's been always shown, like both at Berlin and uh, the leaked photos. All of them are 24 by 40. Even Sandy Monroe did a 24 by 40, but he did the packing actually in the same orientation that I did. Um, and so all the packing that were being shown is 960, but 960 is way too large of a pack. Like we're talking about like an above 400 mile range car. And again, uh, I, I don't believe this is this is correct. Like when you're in a cell shortage and the, the market, the cars are between 300 and 400, you would not go to like, because you're going to uh, structural pack and 4680 cells, suddenly get into the market with a 450 mile range car. So this is why I discounted this. So the um, this solution here of 10P, uh, maybe take the red and make it, the line a bit fatter so this solution here i don't like at all because this is too big and then you can say well well why do you take 24 like you can like take 22 so here but if you do 22 then you go to 880 total cells which it's 88 in series and then the voltage gets too low so basically you, this is not a good solution for me so then you go, well, how about nine? Well, nine, you, you turn into the problem that you have an odd number of cells. So if, if, if you count the rows, you say, okay, I need eight. Eight is like four cooling tubes because they run like in, in pair in between two rows of cell. And then, but you need an extra one. And this one belongs like to two different groups. But this is like the sweet spot. This is where I thought the sweet spot for range and kilowatt hours and everything between 35 and 36, but you need nine. So I don't like that solution. Then if you go to eight, well, then you have 768 cells and that's too low. 
too low of range, too low of everything. It doesn't work. So then you say, well, then I say, well, I don't have to have four arrays. I can have five. And then you start over again. I start the exercise again. So I say five arrays, let's say of 8P. Well, again, I get to 960. And I know 960 I don't like. So I don't like this idea. And if I do 6P here, I, 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 I go even lower than 768. I go to 720. So I don't like this solution either. 7P, oh, that's perfect. 35, 840 cell. That's in the ballpark I'm looking for. But again, I'm doing an odd number of cells. So I don't like that either. Then I say, well, six arrays. How about six arrays? Well, then you can do six. Oh, bingo. Here is one I like. Because I have an, an even number of cells in parallel. And I'm in the ballpark 864. And of course, these solutions are way too low. So in, in the widthwise configuration, like the one I like the most is 24 by 36 with six arrays. Does that make sense? I, I know I skipped over this really fast, but uh, this is like my journey that I went through trying to figure out first, like how, how much uh, uh, electrical charge each cell has, the voltages and everything. But in the widthwise cooling tubes, this was the solution I, I, I got with. And this is, this is where you were talking about like this photo right here from Battery Day, and I, I worked on it a bit, so uh, I'm just going to go over them. So this one here and this one here are the original, like that were shown at Battery Day. And I want you to, you see this little dotted white line? I'll probably zoom in here. You'll see that the scale is not correct. Like the chassis, if the chassis doesn't change size of a Model Y, you can see that the dotted line, they don't line up like the structure. So there was a scale issue here. So I corrected the scale to basically line it up. So if you go down, you see the dotted line right here. Now it matches up as it matches up on top on both sides with the chassis on top. So this is what I called like the corrected scale. Now, I also wanted to show that, well, you're looking widthwise, and this is why it looks like there's a gap because the, the row behind it, it's missing a cell. So this is why I pointed, I added the shadow of the cell to show the actual width of the pack. So yes, so this part here to this part here, you have empty space. But you actually have to run the cooling tubes there if, because in this orientation one zero, you would have to have your manifolds and everything at least mm -hmm. on one side if you're using, let's say, the plaid design yep. with the bidirectional cooling tubes, you would have to, one side would be completely filled with this and not the other one. But now if you look at the one zero packing, uh, zero one packing orientation, the same number of cells, 24 wide, you see that there's a whole lot more space. And this is, again, this is how I, maybe I should have put this image earlier uh, in the presentation, but this is where we're talking about the, the safety and the, uh, the moment of inertia is way better with the zero one than the one zero. And um, yeah, so basically my solution, the, the, the one at the beginning that I started with my solution, my, my work in progress, like speculative design, basically I'm going in the uh, zero one directions, I'm going with four arrays and uh, the, the, it's six cells. So it's an even number of cells, six P and I'm going rows of alternating 35 and 36 cells. There's a reason for that, but because I, initially I wanted 35 and I ran into some problem that the current collectors on the pack were not reversible. If you did either 35 or 36, you needed like a whole other skew, but that's like a whole other, other discussion. So I basically added a cell to alternate the rows and that fixed the problem. I, I just needed one type of current collector uh, to cover the pack. I just had to flip it 180 degrees on itself and it would it would connect uh, properly. So this is the the my design solution. And there's another little little aspect to it. And I'll try to sketch it out. Maybe I should have prepared it in advance. I'll just fatten my pen a little bit. Uh, so I'm zooming out. So if you're doing like a six array, like widthwise. So if I'm looking at the pack, I'll draw it out like a rectangle, like this. This is the car. This is like the direction of travel of the car. 
and I'm doing six arrays. So I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, six. I know they're not perfect, but th this is the thing. So you would start connecting them and you would go like this, right? You would go, you would U-turn, you would go down, you would go up. This would be the serial connections, right? So you would be going like this. And basically you end up that here you have like the most negative terminal and here you have the most positive terminal, right? And uh, let's say on this side, you could run, let's say the cooling. So maybe I could put the cooling, let's say in green. And here you would run the cooling and to the front of the car, so on, like this, right? Um, if you're running an odd number of arrays, naturally, you could see that, let's say your most negative would be here, would be on the diagonal opposite, the most positive would be so if it's let's say instead of six it would five I would have my positive here and it would interfere with my cooling a little bit because I would have to have like bus bars and everything mixed up with my cooling tubes now what's interesting with the other design going into the opposite direction so if I draw like my design just a little bit below here me I have let's say that's the car that's the floor pan direction of travel I have four arrays running lengthwise and I'll take the same color was it blue I'll take blue and I start here I go here I connect all the serial connections here and I end up with my most negative here and my most positive here with a little bit of added bonus I know they took away that for plaid but it's still in the model three you had um the diffuse, the pyrofuse could be put here where you would split the voltage uh, pack is because here it's a positive and here it's negative. So you could blow the pack uh, voltage in half for safety reasons by plugging in. So all my connections are at the rear of the car where it turns out the charging port is right at the rear. You have also the rear wheel drive motor. It's at the rear. And it's only for front wheel drive that you have, you would have to run a bus bar or a cable to, to power the thing. The other thing I liked about this configuration was that the cooling would run all here in the front and I would have my cooling tubes running this way, right next to basically the front of the car where the heat pump is. So for simplicity and for let's say the, the quantity of cooling you're carrying and you, you have to, uh, because in, in this configuration, you're running cooling all the way, let's say, to the back of the car to the last row. And it's going back and forth like this before going back to the outlet, to the return, to the, to the heat pump, right? Whereas here, I'm not running any tube lengthwise. The coolant is actually going through the cooling tube the whole length of the car and coming back through the same coolant tube to the front. So instead of having let's say in a 2436 pack, having 18 cooling tubes running widthwise like this with a manifold running the whole length of the car. In, in this design, I'm running 12 cooling lines to the back of the car from a manifold that's at the front of the car. So again, manufacturing wise, what do you think, Joshua? I, I think I've talked enough. <laughs> yeah, just, just a quick note on... I can see obviously the advantages there. Um, a note on the disadvantages: the the, mm -hmm. the the top configuration here, this would have you know more heat rejection capability from the pack, wouldn't it? Um, because you've got a short a shorter yeah. length for each uh, coolant run across the car, and it's touching less cells, so you can get more heat yeah. out. Whereas here, this this is twice the length of any uh, production coolant run that Tesla do at the moment. Because it's basically it, well, no, well, no, it's, well, it's twice as long with the return. Yeah, exactly. So it's twice as long as the Model Three, Model Y, cool, cool and dry, yeah. isn't it? So, but to, to be fair, this one cools uh, around uh, seventy cells, seventy-one cells, whereas let's say in a Model Y, it's one hundred and forty-four cells. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure to be honest how the heat uh, difference would be there, but under supercharging, I'd expect it to be similar at a pack level. Um, yeah, you, you can ask questions soon. I just want to address this last point because he mentioned, Joshua mentioned this quite rightly uh, on um, 
on Twitter that, of course, there's an efficiency. Of course, you're carrying more coolant, you have more lines, you have like more connections, you have 50% more coolant connection that can leak, that you have to assemble, you have to manufacture all these things. But yes, if you're running uh, two rows of 24 cells per cooling line, especially since it's a bi-directional one, it's, you get more cooling power than if you run uh, 71 cells in uh, on, on a cooling ribbon that's bidirectional. And of course, the, f- taking into account that these cooling ribbons are of the same capacity. So they're not bigger cooling ribbons or they're not snaking differently. They're the same types. Uh, so, so yeah, so we were talking about the cooling uh, efficiency and I just wanted to mention, uh, this is the, the end of the, the, what I had prepared here. Just going to uncover the last bit here. So this is all again from Battery Day. Now, uh, and I've seen this mentioned a lot um, that people, you know, like it was mentioned and I, I've mentioned it as well. Like the, the, the path, the, the, the electrical path is dramatically shortened when you have a tabless design versus a tab design. Uh, and, and of course, it's not the only source of heating in its cells. Like there's, there's a few sources of healing, uh, of heating. One is the, is the omic and it's basically with the electrolyte, with the, the electrodes, uh, the, the interface, the, the, the tab connections, all these things generate resistance. But there's also, um, like activation and, um, uh, concentration polarizations that happen that generate heat and you can't do anything about that. Uh, you do reduce the num- the the amount of heat that you generate in a 4680 because of the tabless design and you can see it clearly here with the supercharging if this is like the challenge with big cells is supercharging is because if you have a tab design let me take my pen here uh, go back to red if you go you can see that and we don't have a time scale here but you can see that with a tab design it becomes like uh, it takes a whole lot more time because you, you can't dump that much power without overheating the cells. Whereas with the, the, the tabless design of the, the 4680 cell, you can basically, at, at the same time for a 21 millimeter diameter, so a 2170, you get basically exactly the same as a 46 millimeter cell. There's no penalty. And I want to explain that a bit because it's, it's, it's quite, quite profound. So yes, you generate less uh, heat via ohmic resistance because the electrons, like for example, an electron that's here uh, on the tab design has to travel, and it's not like a straight line, has to travel all the way out to this little tab. And of course, there's a whole jelly roll and the tab is just like one space. And these paths are, are like, current will take the path of least resistance. So when the cell, let's say it's brand new, uh, each area of the jelly roll has to its tab a path of least resistance. And this path gets overused. And as it's being overused, it affects like the material, it overheats and it, 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 to some extent, it damages that path. And so that path does not become like the path of least resistance anymore. So then electrons start using the second path of least resistance because now it's the first path of least resistance and so on and so forth. So you get hot spots in a cell. And there's the, the second point is, and this is eliminated with the tabless design because basically there's a tap all around the cell everywhere. So the most the electrons have to travel is basically the width or half the width, uh, the, the, no, at most it's the width of the, the, the height of the cell. But the other point is that all the heat that's generated outside of, let's say, ohmic resistance um, is also dissipated. It has a path to get out of the cell, which the tab design does not have. And this is a, almost as even a more major advantage is that, first of all, you're not creating hot spots because there are an infinite number of path of least resistance for the electrons. So they're not overusing a single one. So you're not creating hot spots. but whatever heat you're generating uniformly in the cell, that heat has an amazing path out of the center, let's say of the cell to the outside, to the casing. And this is the tab design. All this copper 
not only conducts electricity, but it conducts heat amazingly well. Like if, uh, and, and, and this, I, I, you're an engineer, Joshua, so I'm not going to, you know, uh, revolutionize anything for you. But for people who maybe don't know, like, like the most expensive copper pans you can buy are made of copper. Why? And why do restaurants use them? Because they don't create hot spots. Because they heat super evenly because copper is one of the best conductors of heat. So the, the, the heat that you can generate in a cell is basically immediately dumped out. And, and since heat flows from hot to cold, it will immediately be drained out of the battery. So you generate less, you generate less localized hotspots. And whatever heat you generate in a tablet's design has an immediate path, uh, a very easy path to the cell casing where it can contact the cooling tube. And this is where I think that so far, like in this presentation, like the check mark, uh, aside from what we've seen, so if we don't say what we've seen counts, but we go by like the engineering of it, all the check marks, like the safety, the rigidity, the, the moment of inertia, the simplicity of manufacturing. Because again, like in, if we're going with six arrays, you're also doing, uh, if we're going with wise, you're also doing 50% more of these cooling tube assemblies. And the number of parts, the, 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 the weight of the coolant and the tubes that you need to run, all of this points that lengthwise is better. The only check mark that Withwise had was, yes, it's a more powerful cooling system. And this is where I'm thinking that if the Plaid can do bidirectional cooling on 144 18650 on a Plaid car, which means is like the highest performance car ever made, um, they can probably do uh, cooling lengthwise bidirectional on half as many cells, so 71 or 72 cells uh, on 4680s. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? I think it, it, you could definitely make it work. Um, I, I see. I understand all the you know the advantages that you you're listing, um, but just based on the evidence of what we see, mm -hmm. I think. Oh yeah, I think Tesla will do it side to side. Yeah, of course. Like I said, it could be radically be different. Wrong, but I'm trying to avoid like the evidence of what's being seen because first of all, uh, like 18 months ago, these photos are old, and there's, it's still not in production. So I'm thinking. And they iterate so fast at Tesla. We've seen like just a heat pump going like from four revisions in like five months, I think, something like that. And we've heard stories, uh, Joe Justice and the, the agile team at Tesla, how they're always iterating. So I'm trying not to focus on what we've been shown, but what makes more sense. And like I said, I could be totally wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm almost, I would be happy to, I would be glad to be wrong in the sense that I would have something new to look at because for example if they tear open a pack and it's exactly what i said then it's basically like okay you know maybe woohoo to me and that's it but if there's something that's completely different then there's the investigation of how they, they make it work why does it make more sense in that way we'll gain new insights so i'm not i'm not married to this idea i'm just saying this is the solution space that i've uncovered by going through this iteration was basically seeing that um, lengthwise makes more sense. And especially when I saw the plot, because before the plot, I didn't know they could do bidirectional cooling. So there was that aspect that really surprised me, but then it clicked that if it's bidirectional, that means you connect just one side and you can do it all from the front. And a, a, a point, just one point on the bidirectional cooling ribbons or channels, they will be significantly more expensive to manufacture than you know the, the plain old vanilla single di direction well there's you know, the compact yeah there's the, well the cooling ribbon doesn't change much it's basically like the connections so if you look at the plaid teardown that was done uh you, you the guy even mentioned uh engineerics that's the the the, the youtube channel he, he he mentioned like all the mm -hmm. the the in the outlets are like machine like cnc machines Aluminum, like yeah. billet. I've got, I've got a pic yeah. picture. Of it. Let me just drop a pic picture in so people can. Yeah, please see. do. I'll just put it at the end here. Yeah. Uh, let me maybe delete the the white rectangle. 
Whoops, what did I do? Oh, it didn't stop the recording. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah, th th these are individually machined. Yeah. And, th and then the actual ribbon is, uh, you know, th that's a much more complex process to blow that, uh, blow the channels in that ribbon. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, 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 of course. Obviously, and if you look co at the, co the, the co cost is not such a constraint for the plaid, you know, it's exactly, exactly. So, so the plaid is not that costly. Uh, it ha has a lot of room margins for it, and yeah, these compared. Mm -hmm. If you compare this connect, these connectors to the um, let's say Model Three, Model Y, twenty one seventies, it's like way more expensive. Yeah, way, way, way more expensive. But again, if I'm running only yeah. twelve of them. Instead of here, they're running uh, 100 and what was it? 105, uh, 110. They're running 110 of these. Uh, no, uh, 11 times 5, 55 of these, sorry. They're running 55 of these, so five times more than the Model Y would run on the structural pack. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, if, if on a plaid that, you know, uh, is meant to accelerate over and over under two seconds, zero to 60, and they're cooling these tabbed 18650 cells, 144 at a time per cooling tube, I'm thinking that with the, the, all the thermal and electrical uh, uh, less resistance that is in a 4680, I'm thinking it could probably do of course, this is a probability, and we're going to try to model, like with uh, SimScale, we're going to try to model the pack, the, the, first the, the fluid dynamics of these bidirectional cooling tubes. Uh, we're going to try to model that, and then we're going to model like the thermal behavior of such an arrangement on, let's say, 4680 cells, and we're going to see like what, what we can come up with. So we might gain a little bit of insight on that. Uh, but yeah, I'm... As you can see, like we're finding a lot of things that we saw in some leaked photos of Berlin in the plaid, like the current collectors, uh, the absence of the tiny little mm -hmm. boards and the, the ribbon uh, that, that connected them, um, bidirectional cooling. The thin, bu the thin buzz bars that are, you know, they're like super Yeah, exactly. And, and they're plaid. probably laser welded or um, uh, uh, ultrasonically welded. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, I, I, I got to say that I, it, in the plaid uh, pack, uh, I saw a lot of, um, like, uh, RTV silicone and uh, tie wraps and all these sort of stuff. So, it, 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 there, even to this day, I'm pretty sure, like, the first plaid that was delivered versus a plaid being made today, the pack is different. So, it, it's... It, if this is for something that's in production, I can imagine that for something that's not in production, it would also, uh, like the, they've been working on, and this is the thing, this is for mass manufacturing. So basically cost is everything. So they've been iterating probably for a few years now on this structural pack and first on the 4680 cells, like the, the cell itself, but then how to, how to assemble it. And yeah, so yeah, of course, this is not about, oh, this is the conclusion uh, the, the pack is this way or it's that way. I was just wanted to expose and get some pushback uh, from you, like on, you know, because I might, like I, I mentioned, I might have tunnel vision on this and not seeing things for, you know, um, maybe not seeing some obstacles. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I don't know if anybody on stage has any questions, go right ahead. Uh, uh, if, if not, uh, we'll be taking callers. Uh, I hope you can stick around, Joshua, maybe because you can answer some of the questions. And while we're doing that, I will be stopping mm -hmm. the recording in three, two, one, letting it uh, go to disk. And so we didn't lose anything this time, but like the time I'm not going to be doing this is the time it's going to crash again and I'm going to lose everything. So I'd rather, you know, Murphy's Law, I'd rather do it and i'm going to be starting the recording again very shortly if people have questions uh record and we're back on if there's no more uh questions on this uh, show and tell episode i really want to thank joshua and uh, we'd love to have you back uh later on uh, maybe when the pack gets broken up and torn down and we can uh, revisit 
uh, these things and maybe have a whole new investigation. <laughs> on, on, yeah. And, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks and and to everybody, basically like on Twitter, if you have questions and everything, and I see a question's coming up, like I'll, I'll invite you to come on and uh, uh, like chew the fat on, on this stuff. We're doing this for fun. It's nothing like official. I'm actually like modeling uh, the jelly rolls and everything. So I'm trying to make the complete pack like in 3D so we can, you know, actually um, like dive deep into how everything is going to be manufactured and connected and uh, trying to keep up on the iterations of the design uh, from basically week to week. I do this like in spare time. So, yeah, and Twitter, if you have, uh, I, I get DMs, people telling me all sorts of stuff, ideas, uh, both publicly and privately. Uh, I appreciate all that. Uh, I take it all into consideration, even though maybe I don't reply to every uh, every single uh, person because it would be like too much. But yeah, like uh, keep it coming. And yeah, this was part 1.5 because I wasn't planning on doing this. But since there was a lot of question every week about the cooling and the direction it would run, I thought I would do like uh, part 1.5. But uh, I was planning on doing a four part series. And that's still planned at some point. Uh, so subscribe to the XPod so you you get notification. Follow maybe the account on Twitter as well. Uh, everything gets announced there. And yeah, if that's it. And so one thing I'll, I'll add uh, is, uh, and for our YouTube listeners that are going to listen to this afterwards, is we uh, um, Colin now has a website. So for all the like non iPhone users and the Android users and stuff, you don't need to like download the app at all anymore to listen to our episodes. That you can just click the link on, you know, on our uh, Twitter account and you could just listen directly through uh, your desktop and all of our episodes will be there as well. So super simple now. Yeah. And this, this episode, because there's video, there's a bit of like stitching up to do and everything probably be available in, in the next couple of days uh, on, on YouTube. So you can watch it and, and share it and comment on it. If something comes uh, later to, to your mind and you hadn't had time to ask here in the room so want to thank everybody and uh wish everybody a good night and catch you soon bye-bye